Hi everyone, in here. Today's video we're going to be building the Pico RGB keypad base from Pimeroni. Okay, so we have the keypad base. You would have seen this in my last video uh, where I had a whole bunch of stuff. It doesn't actually come with the Pico that um, you need for it to work. Um, if you saw my last video, I put together the Pico and I soldered the header pins to it um, badly. Um, and the reason for this was so that we could make progress on some of these other projects that are more exciting. So today we're going to be doing the build of this keypad. We're going to be attempting to make some pretty lights on it, similar to this, which is uh, how the launch pad looks when you turn it on. So the launch pads, when you turn it on, you get these lovely array of lights. Um, and because uh, the this keypad base uh, RGB lights, we can go ahead and do that. We can hopefully assign these using the software that Pimeroni provide. Um, uh, sorry, the Python code that Pimeroni provide, and I'd like to try and customize some of it. So hopefully, we'll be seeing a bit of that later in the video as well. So I'm going to go ahead and unbox this and try and unbox, unbag it. Um, and try and put it together. I think it's fairly simple. It's described as fairly simple, which is good because I'm a simple person. So let's uh, cut this open. Ooh, there we go. Complete shred the bag. So we have some screws. We have the silicone uh, keys, so these are nice and squidgy. I think these are probably a little bit harder than what we'd see on the uh, launch pad there. And then we've got a basically a thing to protect the underside of the PCB. So we have this little guy. They're much taller than the ones on the um, launch pad. Um, and then the actual PCB itself. So hopefully, when I put my Pico in here, it should just all work lovely and work with the uh, Pimeroni's brilliant software that they uh, generally put together. Um, let me just see if this will just slot in. It's this way around. There we go, nice. So you can see my bad soldering on that, which ain't, ain't ain't so good. So Pimeroni provide really good instructions on their site. Well, hopefully they're really good this time as well. Ah, there's an instruction here that says attach the rubber feet to the bottom, which are these guys. So I didn't get these out originally. So let's do that. And we have these little paws that we can just attach them to. So they should just stick on there. in to get silicon pads. Oh, wrong way around. Cool. So it goes on that way up. So zero to sixteen I think that is in uh, hexadecimal. Yeah, all the way up to F. Okay, so we have some tiny holes here, just in here, which the screws go through. So if I can actually poke that through. Okay, there's one. Let's try and do the other ones first. <laughs> These are a bit fiddly to get in. 
but it's fine I suppose because these, these keys are quite tall it's actually quite difficult to get these in the top oh wow there's not a great deal poking out okay so I read in one of the comments that you shouldn't do these up too tight because it can end up pulling the um, contacts down. Um, but there we go, so assembled. Nice little tidy uh, project there. That's pretty cool. Um, so let's see if we can connect this up to a computer and make it do something exciting. So according to Pi Moroni's instructions, in order to do this we need to install some custom firmware on the uh, Pico. Um, and in order to do that, we need to hold down the boot selector and copy some files onto it. So I'm going to be doing that now. So uh, you need to, this is known as putting it into bootloader mode. Um, so you can see the tiny, tiny, tiny button there, the boot selector. So. Um, or boot cell, I don't know if that stands for selector, I assume it does. Um, and this should be done while it's being plugged into a computer. So I'm going to do that now and see if it even shows up because obviously this is subject to my um, soldering. So let's start by putting it in the right way around. It's a classic thing with USB cables. This should show up on the computer. That. Is that what it is? RPI RP2? Yes, looks like it. Brilliant. Okay, so it's actually turning on. That's a good start. So, we need to copy these files on, and then apparently this will reboot. So, let's go to the release page. Current version, as it stands on their GitHub repository, is uh, 0.21. So, what's this? What this is installing is a bunch of extra libraries that go with these um, Pimeroni packs that they've uh, created. Um, okay, so there's one with the Pimeroni libs, and there's one with the um, with an Ada fruit gubbins as well, which I don't believe is what I'll need. So, I will save this. And I'll save it to the RPI2. This is a UF2 file, whatever that is. And this should, well, it's called, it seems to have rebooted, which is what they say it should do. So the next step from Pimeroni is to install Bonnie, which is an IDE, um, which allows us to talk to the Raspberry Pi Pico and send it a code that we want it to run. So I'm going to do that and try and run their demo, their very basic kind of LED demo just to see if the Pico is working correctly and then we can move on to the more interesting um, RGB demo. So I'm going to install that now and there is a Mac version which is what I'm using so let's grab that. Agree, agree, agree. And my password. Hooray. Yes, move that to the bit. Funny. Let's go. There we go. So we've got MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico. That's what we need to select the correct interpreter. Print Hello World Classic. Okay, cool. So this code should turn on the LED, which is right there. So a tiny LED that's right on the end of the Pico. So let's see if that works, because then.
that's pretty cool. I've turned an LED on and off. So we've got our code running. That's good. We can actually do <laughs> we've been actually been able to do something great. Ah, oh, that's nice. So let's stop that. And in the repository for the primary only Piku, there is a demo of keypad stuff. So let's grab that and see if that works. We want it on here. Yeah. So all the lights have come on there. Oh, and they go green when I press them. How exciting. So I'm pretty impressed with myself. I've been able... Oh, and now they go in a different colour. How exciting. Oh, there you go. Oh, just going through a rainbow. So you have to press all of them. It's quite cool. Little demo there. So now we're going to purple. Oh, this makes me happy. It makes me happy to know that <laughs> my my um, soldering ain't that bad. So it seems to be working. Well, I suppose it could fail on other things. Look at this. This is very pretty. I'm sure my kids will have fun press seeing this and going nuts with the. Anyway, so. We could attempt to look at this and try and figure out what it's doing um, from the code. So here's Python code, obviously. Uh, we are doing some keypad initialization, setting the brightness to a certain level. I think I probably need to dig a bit deeper into these libraries, but yeah. But this is pretty cool, look at that. I can press buttons, they're nice and squidgy. I can cycle through colours. It's worth saying that this is a pretty cheap um, kit. The, without the Pico on it, it's uh, 20, 20 or quid, uh, excluding delivery. Um, and the Pico is only £3.60 itself. If you get one with the headers already pre-soldered on it, it's six quid. Um, so it's a really cheap, fun little project to do. Um, yeah, I'm going to go off and play with this and see if I can get it to do anything else. I've had a bit of a play with some of the code. And so I thought it was worthwhile going back through the code that Pimer only provides and just um, talking about it and then giving some examples of things that I've done. Um, so Pimer only's code is kind of quite difficult to get your head around. It, it's very low level. Uh, it uses uh, uh, bitwise uh, um, operators in order to do a lot of the work. And if you're not familiar with this, this is kind of like you're dealing with binary operations basically uh, on the keypad. So the keypad has um, 0 to 16 addressed, um, addressable uh, LEDs. And this bit of code at the top of uh, Pi Moroni's stuff is basically tracking which of the buttons are pressed. And um, it does that through the lit variable. So that lit variable will gradually increase in a boolean value. So this kind of ampersand, ampersand uh, operation. And so therefore it's checking which of these buttons are pressed and then later on it goes through and uses that in order to uh, illuminate it correctly. And that's quite difficult to get your head around. It'll take me some time and, uh, you know, I've been doing this stuff for a while. If you're not familiar with hardware, it's probably not the easiest library to jump into. Anyway, there's a couple of really good libraries that I found that uh, make this easier. The Pi Moroni demo, I modified the Pi Moroni demo first. So I took out some of the stuff and added a uh, slight delay. So it basically just animates the LEDs going along. Um, so that's kind of the simpler one. You don't need any extra libraries or anything to do that, first of all. The second one that I did was using this RGB keypad from um, Martin O'Hanlon. And 
he's done a really good job at making things a lot simpler so we can refer to the individual XY coordinates um, and we can just assign RGB values so from 0 to 255 and he's even giving examples of what the colors actually are lower down and yeah so this is a lot simpler to work with so yeah I've used this keypad stuff to um, create this nice animation so when you press a key you kind of get this radiant like uh, animation come from it so it illuminates in X and Y directions and the code's very simple could be simplified as literally something I threw together but yeah it's a really nice example of doing these sorts of animations and shows how you know uh, how nicely this kind of RGB keyboard a keypads library can be utilized. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed putting this project together. If you did enjoy it, then please uh, like and consider subscribing to the channel. And I'm looking forward to doing much more with the Pico in future videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Pico RGB keypad base. Pico RGB keypad base. You can say it, Ian. You can say it. Uh, Pico RGB key, key uh. Pico RGB key base pads from um, or key pad base in fact.